Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel Rashid Iqbal. In today's video we are going to explore one of the most important topic in electrical design that is earthing or grounding system design and calculation. We will begin by learning how to perform a soil resistivity test which is the most critical step in earthing design. Next we will understand the different type of earthing system used in commercial and high rise buildings. After that we will go through how to calculate the resistance of a single earth rod and then learn how to determine the required number of rods needed to achieve the target resistance we will also discuss the minimum distance that must be maintained between rods and finally we will learn how to calculate the proper size of earthing cable so don't skip any part of this video watch till the end to make sure your concept about earthing are completely clear so let's start number 1 soil resistivity the first step is to measure the soil resistivity because soil type and moisture directly affect the design if soil is wet or containing good moisture its resistivity is low which means the current can flow easily through the ground as a result it become much easier to achieve the target earth resistance typically below 1 ohm for substation or sensitive elv panel and below 5 ohms for general building earth things if the soil is dry or sandy it doesn't conduct electricity well so current cannot flow easily in such case resistance stay high until the electrode reach moist soil or the water level where it drops and earthing become effective here you can see the difference in wet soil leakage current from the electrical panel quickly flow into the ground because the resistance is low but in dry or sandy soil the current moves very slowly since the ground resistance is high that's why engineers always prefer to install earth rod in moist soil layers or near the water level where the moisture level remain stable throughout the year to find out the actual soil condition and resistivity we use a standard method called winner 4 point test in this method earth resistive meter is used to perform test drive four small test probes into the soil along with a straight line and maintain equally spaced inject current between the outer two probes that is c1 and c2 as you can see here C1 and C2 and measure voltage between inner two probes that is P1 and P2 you can see here in this meter it is written C1 C2 P1 P2 so the testing device called earth resistive meter is displayed the measured resistance in ohms then using this resistive value we can calculate the soil resistivity that we called rho this is the sign of rho so the formula rho equal to 2 multiply by pi multiply by a pi multiply by r where a is the probe distance this is the distance here it is in the meter and r is the measured resistance this value we can get from this meter let's take a example if probe spacing is 3 meter and after measured from device we get resistance is 20 ohms so we can put this value in that formula rho equal to 2 multiply pi multiply 3 multiply by 20 this is 20 this is the resistance what we measured from this device and we maintain 3 meter distance so this is the 3 after solving this equation we got 377 ohm meter so this is the resistivity of the soil for most design we take the worst case means highest value measured during the dry season so in that soil the resistance we get 20 ohm and uh, according to iec 60364 and many local codes for commercial or high rise building the recommended earth resistance is less than 1 ohm and for small buildings or uh, residential villas it should be uh, we can say up to 2 or less than 5 ohms once we obtain the soil resistivity value we can select the most stable earthing method for the project in practice 
three main types of earthing system are commonly used. Number one, ring or grid earthing system. Number two, vertical rod earthing. Number three, plate electrode earthing. Four, chemical earthing and pipe earthing. There is a lot of methods, but basically we are using these methods. In this video, we will focus on the two most commonly used methods for commercial and high-rise building. That is ring or grid earthing and vertical rod earthing. These two methods are preferred because they provide better reliability and lower resistance, making them ideal for large installation. Let's start. Ring or earth grid. Ring or grid earthing system. For large commercial or industrial building, we often use ring or grid earth system. In a ring system, a bare copper conductor is buried around the building perimeter to form a closed loop. For better performance, a grid of a conductor is laid under the soil, connected at a several points and bonded with vertical rods. This system offers three key benefits. Uniform potential distribution, high reliability, since multiple parallel paths are available for current flow, and the third, better performance, especially in those areas where high soil resistivity. That's why ring or grid system are widely used in substation, airports, data center, and tall commercial tower where reliability and safety are critical. In practice, the earthing system for a large building is usually combination of these methods. Typically, we have multiple vertical rods around the plot. A buried bare copper conductor ring interconnected all rods and main earthing conductor linking with buried grid to the main panel. But now the question is, how do we decide how many earth rod are required and what size of bare copper conductor should be used for the buried ring? To find that, we first need to calculate the resistance of a single earth rod. Once we know that value, we can estimate how many rods will indeed to achieve the required total earth resistance. And then we will calculate the size of buried copper conductor accordingly. So next we calculate the resistance of single vertical rod and the formula is R1 equal to inside the bracket rho divided by 2 multiplied by pi L then multiply by natural log 4 multiply by L divided by T minus 1 close bracket where rho is soil resistivity in ohm meter as I said earlier L is the rod length and D is the rod diameter. So let assume soil resistivity what we calculated earlier equal to 377 ohm meter. This value we get from our soil resistivity test earlier. Let assume a rod length L equal to 3 meter and rod diameter D equal to 16 millimeter. Substitute this value in this formula then it become R1 equal to 377 divided by 2 multiplied by pi uh, multiply by 3 then multiplication natural log 4 multiply by 3 divided by 0 0.016 0 0.016 this is this is in meter actually our value in millimeter rod diameter is 16 millimeter we need to convert into meter so it's become 0 0.016 minus 1 so r1 equal to 377 divided by after solving this small part it become 18.85 multiply by natural log and after solving this small part it becomes 750 so once we solve this equation we get r1 equal to then it become 112 ohms that means a single 3 meter rod in this type of soil gives about 112 ohms which is very high and not acceptable for most installation so to reduce the resistance we install multiple rods and connect them in parallel through a buried copper conductor that's why we need to calculate the numbers of rod required how many rods we need here if rods are spaced at least one rod length apart the combined resistance can be roughly calculated as r total equal to r1 divided by n where r1 is the resistance of single earth rod n is the number of rod installed in parallel 
and R total is the overall resistance of the complete earthing system. So in our case, the resistance of one rod R1 is 112 ohm. And as per the client requirement, we need to achieve a total resistance. R total is 2 ohm. We need to achieve this requirement. So R, this is the R total value. So substitute this all value in this formula. N equal to 112 divided by 2 equal to 56 rods. This is 56 rods required to achieve 2 ohms. But installing 56 rods is not practical. It would require a very large area, a lot of copper and high installation cost. So it is also not economical for building project. That's why instead of using too many rods, we try other practical method like increasing rod length, improving the soil condition or adding a buried copper ring or grid to reduce the overall resistance more efficiently. Now let's say we use 4 meter long rods and add bentonite to improve the soil which reduce the soil resistivity to 40 ohm meters. Let's see how this affect our calculation and help us achieve a lower resistance with few rods. So we will put this all value in this formula, same formula R1 is equal to rho ohm divided by 2 pi L multiplied by natural law 4, 4 L divided by T minus 1. So let me substitute all this value R1 equal to 40. This is the soil resistivity. After adding bentonite, it become 40 divided by 2 multiplied by pi multiplied by 4. This is the new length of the rod that is 4 meter multiplied by natural log 4 multiplied by 4. This is the length divided by 0 0.016. This is the same. This is the diameter of rod 60 mm if we convert into meter minus 1. After solving this equation, we got R1 equal to 9.40 ohm this is the new resistance of single rod so uh, so we need to calculate how many rods required to achieve 2 ohm to achieve 2 ohm so we know the formula r total equal to r1 divided by n r1 we have here 9.40 ohm divided by n we don't know how many number how many rods required so after solving this equation we get n equal to 4.7 so let's take a round figure 5. We required 5 numbers of rod. So this is the practical and economical compared to the 56 rods. By using longer rods, improving the soil and adding a buried copper ring, we can achieve a reliable earthing system with fewer rod and lower cost. Once we find out the numbers of rod, then the question arises here what the distance to be maintained between rods. That's why we will learn here a spacing of rods. To minimize mutual resistance, it should be spaced at least one rod length apart. And if space allows, there is a sufficient space, then twice the rod length is even better. This proper spacing ensured that each rod work effectively without overlapping electrical fields, giving us better overall performance of the earthing system. For 4 meter rods, use a spacing of 4 to 8 meter between rods around the building parameter. Now we will learn the conductor sizing. This buried ring must carry full fault current for the clearing time to protective device. So we can use this formula S equal to I multiplied by root T divided by K, where S is the cross sectional area in mm square. I is the fault current in kilo ampere. T is the disconnection time in seconds and K is the material constant. For bare copper conductor we use K equal to 115 for 50 degree centigrade. So let's take an example. Our maximum earth fault current I equal to 20 kilo ampere and protection clearing time T equal to 1 second. So let me substitute this value in the formula as equal to 20 multiplied by root 1, this is 1 second, divided by 115, this is a constant of copper, equal to 174 mm square, S equal to 174 mm square. So let me add a safety factor, usually safety factor is vary from 1.2 to 1.8, I will consider here 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25,
सो वन हंड्रेड सेवेंटी फोर मल्टीप्लाई बाई वन पॉइंट टू फाइव इक्वल टू टू हंड्रेड सेवेंटीन पॉइंट फाइव एम एम स्क्वायर दिस साइज ऑफ केबल वी नीड टू इंस्टॉल टू कैरी मैक्सिमम अर्थ फॉल्ट दैट इज ट्वेंटी किलो एम्पेयर इन वन सेकेंड सो वी नीड केबल साइज टू हंड्रेड सेवेंटीन पॉइंट फाइव एम एम स्क्वायर एज वी नो दिस साइज ऑफ केबल इज नॉट अवेलेबल इन द मार्केट सो वी विल गो विद नेक्स्ट बिगर साइज ऑफ द केबल वी नीड टू सेलेक्ट स्टैंडर्ड साइज इज टू This is the size 240 square mm cable we will use now. So once we calculate everything, now we design the ring conductor or earth grid. First we make a trench, which depth is 600 to 1000 mm. Ensure all rods share current equally. Once trench ready, we can lay sand layer or bentonite powder layer. Then we can lay bare copper conductor. buried around the entire building interlinking all earth rods you can see here for joint we can do exothermic welding or heavy duty clamp used to connect to each rod here you can see we are making t joint using exothermic welding once all joint complete we can backfill with native soil or bentonite uh, powder to maintain moisture so these are the method of uh, ring or grid method now let's talk about vertical rod electrode vertical rod are thing the most common type of are thing these rod are usually copper bonded steel and standard length are 1.5 or 3 meters or depends on manufacturer here you can see a coupler which is used to join rods together copper bonded steel rods are preferred because they are economical and uh, corrosion resistance and easy to install with minimum excavation this makes them the first choice of most residential commercial and industrial project worldwide in normal soil a single or double rod is often enough to get low earth resistance but in dry or high resistive soil a single rod or double rod may not be enough to reduce the resistance engineers usually follows two methods install multiple rods in parallel forming a ring or grid earthing system which i already explained earlier and the second method drive longer rods deeper into the moist or more conductive soil layers such as clay or near the water level in desert or hilly region especially in some middle eastern country the soil is extremely dry and the water table is very deep because of this a normal 3 meter earth rod cannot achieve low resistance so we connect several rods together and install them deeper into the ground a process known as deep boring in such cases we use deep boring where the rod is installed much deeper sometime 12 20 or even 30 meter or 40 meter until we reach moist soil or water level the installation process for vertical rod is first we need to drill or bore a hole to required depth sometime down to the water level to ensure good moisture and low earth resistance a pvc pipe is used in the bore hole to prevent it from collapsing soil second install copper bonded or solid copper rod in section connected with threaded couplers fill the space around the rod with bentonite clay or ground enhancement powder to improve conductivity connect the rod to the main earth bus bar through a test link in a inspection earth pit allowing future testing and maintenance this can reduce resistance to as low as 0.1 ohm and that the complete process for installing a vertical rod earthing system so all right everyone that bring us to the end of today video on earthing system designing and calculation if you found this video helpful don't forget to like share and subscribe to my channel for more practical electrical design tutorials also hit the bell icon so you can never miss an update thank you for watching and we will see you in the next video stay safe and keep learning thank you